Hi, I'm Jordan Klebanoff. I'm an OBGYN resident from Christiana Hospital, and welcome to this week's episode of Pocket Pearls. Welcome to this week's episode of Pocket Pearls. I'm here with Dr. Stephanie Gargano and Margo Hines. Due to the realization that infants born in the late term period have worse outcomes than infants born at 37 weeks or after, there was a joint workshop in 2005 that asked to redirect research efforts to evaluate the outcomes of newborns born in the late preterm period. From that effort came the publication in the New England Journal in 2016 titled Antenatal Betamethasone for Women at Risk for Late Preterm Delivery. Dr. Gargano is going to ask us some questions about the study. Margo, what was the point of the study? So the authors designed this study uh, to look at uh, neonates that were born in the late preterm period and see whether steroids would affect respiratory, the rate of respiratory morbidity and other complications of those neonates. Who was included in the study? The study included women between 34 weeks and 36 and 6 who were at high risk for delivery in the late preterm period. What do they mean by high likelihood of delivery? The authors had multiple criteria for what they considered a high likelihood of delivery. They defined high likelihood of delivery as either preterm labor with intact membranes and at least three centimeters dilation or 75% effacement or spontaneous rupture of membranes. If neither of these criteria were met, then it was defined as expected preterm delivery for any other indication, either through induction of labor or C-section between 24 hours and seven days after the randomization. Who do they exclude? That's an important question because it is very confusing. So they excluded any patient that had previously received antenatal corticosteroids. They also excluded women they felt were at high risk of delivery within 12 hours. And the way they define that is any woman who was three centimeters or more dilated, or if they had rupture of membranes and were contracting more than six contractions an hour, unless they felt it was safe to withhold oxytocin for 12 hours. They also excluded cases of chorionionitis if the patients were eight centimeters or more dilated, and if there was any non-reassuring fetal status that required immediate delivery. What was the intervention? The intervention that they did was they took the women that were eligible for the study and consented and they randomized them in a one-to-one -one fashion to either betamethasone or placebo. What were the results of the study? They found about a 20% reduction in a composite of adverse neonatal outcomes and largely that reflected a decreased need for respiratory support within 72 hours. However, they also found infants in the treatment arm also had about a 60% increased rate of hypoglycemia. The key findings from this study are that when you have a patient at high risk of delivery in the late preterm period, as long as she hasn't received antenatal corticosteroids previously and there isn't immediate delivery required, giving this mom steroids has a decrease in the adverse respiratory outcomes for the newborn with a slight chance of having hypoglycemia. Since recent uh, evidence, uh, go back, just restart it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to look constipated in the video. <laughs> Whatever. Three, this might work. Two, one. What do they you mean? You guys look like you're going to kiss. <laughs> Staring into each other's eyes. That's an excellent question, Dr. Leopold, because it can be a little bit confusing. <laughs> do you think anyone would notice? A lot of views if you did. <laughs> That is one way to increase viewership. The high likelihood of delivery. 